Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Discovery Hearing brings out two bombshells in favor of Ripple, Jeremy Hogan. Yesterday's Discovery Hearing in SEC vs. Ripple produced two surprise bombshells in Ripple's favor, as analyzed by Jeremy Hogan. Judge Sarah Netburn believes XRP has value as a currency and a utility. So, as Hogan explained, there were two big surprises at once. Disclaimer, without giving any legal or financial advice, so on a scale from 1 to 10, this hearing was an 11 for Ripple. And by way of introduction, Hogan laid out that there were currently four open motions in the case. These are, on the one hand, SEC's motion to inspect Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson's financial records, the SEC's motion to strike Ripple's fair notice defense, Garlinghouse and Larson's motion to dismiss the individual lawsuits, and Ripple's motion for disclosure of documents as to why it took the SEC seven years to sue Ripple. So the two bombshells in favor of Ripple, first there was Judge Netburn's bombshell when she interrupted Garlinghouse attorney Matthew Solomon to say, my understanding of XRP is that not only does it have currency value, but it also has a utility and that utility distinguishes it, I think, from Bitcoin and Ether. Is that correct question? As Hogan states, this is an extremely positive signal for Ripple. Now, the comment itself shows that the judge has done some research. Even the logic is faulty. The statement is premised on two humongous things. One, that XRP has a currency value, and two, that XRP has utility. First, no matter what the SEC might be trying to argue, a currency and a security are, by definition, an opposite. So Judge Natburn buys Ripple's argument that it has utility, at least at this point in time. This is exactly what Ripple wants the court to believe, as Hogan says. When she first was hawking about it and said, currency and utility, I thought she was Chris Larson's attorney. Boom. Wow. So in the second bombshell, which was less flashy but no less significant, thus an attorney for the SEC stated that under U.S. securities laws, only Ripple and affiliates of Ripple can have sold XRP illegally, Hogan analyzed. And why is that super important is the question, and that means that the exchanges that delisted XRP two months ago were not and would not be violating securities laws if they relisted XRP for sale and began to sell it again. So I think we recently saw one exchange that relisted XRP. So I wonder if there is perhaps a slew of non-action letter requests coming or already received by the SEC. And so I wonder if we see XRP for sale in the U.S. again. Now in the SEC vs. Ripple, Attorney Deaton files the pre-motion letter for intervention by 10,000 XRP holders. So attorney Johnny Deaton has filed the pre-motion letter, initiating a second attempt at intervention in the case between Ripple and the SEC. And at this point, over 10,000 XRP investors support the motion. Also, Ripple hired Uber veteran to lead Southeast Asian expansion. Blockchain company Ripple Labs has appointed a new managing director to head Southeast Asia, an important market for the firm. The newly appointed MD is Brooks Entwistle, who is a former Uber executive. Also, two Chancery grants Ripple win and the Tetragon cash out suit. And the Delaware Chancery Court on Friday shut down a Tetragon Financial Group Limited suit seeking to bar Ripple Labs from using its assets for anything but redeeming Tetragon's stock. So Ripple seems to be winning a lot, and XRP is already on the move. It went from around 47 cents. Last I checked, current pricing at the beginning of this video was 53 cents. So maybe all this good news is going to start pushing XRP back up. And then as they relist back in the U.S., maybe continue climbing just in time for it to take off in this year's bull run. And as we discussed, I just want to re-highlight, the SEC tells Judge that XRP cannot be compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum during the hearing. So 
Mr. Solomon tries to say that we are no different than Bitcoin and Ether, as Ripple's own lawyers told them. You are not like Bitcoin because you are one entity that has created these assets that is fundamentally different. And Tenrero also called into question XRP's utility, adding that any of Ripple's efforts to create use cases for the token actually proves it's a security. We dispute whether this utility actually exists, Your Honor. But the point is, even if it did not exist, Ripple and the defendant's efforts to develop a use for XRP is what makes XRP a security. So during Solomon's presentation, Netburn asked whether having a utility distinguished XRP from Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two cryptocurrencies that the SEC doesn't consider to be securities, it might not be relevant to the issue, but it's important to understand. My understanding of XRP is that not only does it have currency value, but it also has a utility, and that utility distinguishes it, I think, from Bitcoin and Ether. Is that correct? Is the question. So way to go, Judge. All right, guys, before we leave, I want to leave you with a final thought. Work until expensive becomes cheap. And I want to say thank you to our VIP on Patreon, Surf and Gary Davidson. Thank you for your support, and much love to each and every one of you. And we will catch you in the next one.